Welcome back to the show. Russell Brown is with us again today, and he just showed us one of his super tips and techniques, which is how to take a flat image and put it into a three-dimensional image and make it look three-dimensional. We're going to pick up where we left off. Yes. Okay. okay. We, as you remember, we had our grid, which we laid over the surface, which gave us the perspective lines, and that helped us distort each of the layers. Okay. And we have our layers, each of our layers, we can turn them on and off here. It, I don't think I need the grid any longer, so I can turn it off, and that's the beauty of creating the grid over the surface. You can have it there when you need it, turn it on or off. My final step on this um, would be give it a little bit of lighting. I could use lighting effects, but I'm going to use something different. I'm just going to use levels and select a particular side, and hit Command L or Image Adjust Levels. I prefer using levels in this case much better than brightness and contrast. Now as I move the levels adjustment, I can make that side lighter or darker overall. I'm going to give it a little bit of a shading and make it darker so it drops it back in shade. Okay. So what you did there, you actually grabbed the middle gray value inside. You know, that wasn't the... the perfect way to do it though. Okay. Because I'm going to hit that again and show you the perfect way to do it. All right. The mid-tones, moving down the mid-tones is great because it takes all the mid-tones and makes them darker. Mm -hmm. But here's a super tip and technique, and it has to do with output controls. Okay. I want the whites in the image to become gray, as if they're in shadow. All right. And only here, only Russell's <laughs> demo, could you find out that you move the output controls, the white triangle, inward. And that's going to gray the image. Now let's oh. select the preview one so we can see this. So now we can see the preview. It's actually shaded. The shade of white has become gray as if it were in a shadow, much more realistic. Right. So again, in this case, we're just applying it to that layer that's the right side of the box, and that's why we're only affecting it. So it appears as if the light is coming in and has a shadow on that side. Right. Uh, final little adjustment we might do. The, we could go in to, this, uh, to the other layer, um, this top layer. Hey, Deke, did you know this trick? Did you know this trick? Let's, uh, Deke knows all these tricks. With the Move tool selected, you see me going over to the Layers dialog a lot to mm -hmm. select each layer that I want on. If I hold down the, sh the i got to remember, not the Shift key. If I hold down the Command key with the Move tool and hover over the particular layer I want, a hand appears. That way I can toggle between particular layers. Any layer that's visible and not blocked by another layer, I can quickly switch to it. As you can see, as I switch to the background, it connects to the background. I'm now working on the background. I'm now working on the side of the box. I'm now working. Uh -huh. Which is especially great if you don't know what layer something is on. You know, you're searching around, you've got like yeah. a 16, 17 layer document, and you just want to click on one item and, and use it. Just start working on it immediately. Here's a warning. If the layer is set to something, it's the transparent box. <laughs> <laughs> if the, I have selected this layer and made it semi-transparent by moving the transparency adjustment. Right. Now if I use the command key and click, um, it oh, goes really? through. Really? It sees yeah. through it. And so, hey, did we get deep on yes, that one? We did. Yes, we did. Yes, you did. <laughs> so if it is below 50% transparency, the finger looks through it. Uh -huh. If it's anywhere above, 50 percent, oh, really? it goes to it. Oh, that's very clever. Nifty little trick. So okay. you can go through layers, but they're semi-transparent. Let's shift one, this one back. So something, I always have to hit Deke with something <laughs> he didn't know. A great capability. Remember, that's the command key with the move tool, turns mm -hmm. into the arrow. I think my final step would be go to the background here. I might just lay in, make a selection of an area for a shadow. To serve as the mask. To serve as the mask. And I might um, go to the background, select my dodge and burn tool. In this case, I want to burn. And let's hide the selection. And I can go in here and burn the selection down. And as I select this, you can see that it's burning the sidewalk, the edge of the brick, and gives me a nice shadow. To and the burning back. again means? Take the existing pixels and make them darker. OK. Okay, what are we going to come back with? We're going to come back with some text effects to blow text your effect. mind away. Okay, sounds good to me. It's break time, so hit pause, go get a snack, but be sure and come back because we're not finished. We have more super tips and techniques in Photoshop 3.0 with Russell Brown.
Welcome back to Digital Gurus. Russell just showed us how to take two-dimensional art, make it three-dimensional, and light it. Not with lighting effects, but rather with uh, color correction levels. And now it's time for text effects. Text effects. Sounds like I'm from Texas. That's our <laughs> new name, text effects. <laughs> um, Yeehaw. Hey, I always like to start with a blank screen with text effects. And let's load in some elements. In this demo, I'm going to talk about creating a shadow from text, as well as creating an illusion that I've got carved wood from any typeface. Okay. okay. Let's try this. So let's go to our channels. I happen to have some things here in the oven. I've got some text that I've created in a channel, white text on a black background. And you can see how I can go between these, going to RGB to text, so you can identify and see those. But you can also load any channel as a selection. Right. And there are a couple ways, as we've known, you can drag the word text down into the selection icon, and it loads it. Command D to deselect that. But one of the ones I like to use is a hidden feature, not in the manual, and that's Option Command 4. Now because, why 4? Because it's <laughs> channel number 4. I okay. named the layer text, but it's number 4. Now, here's a quiz, Deke. If I select Option Command 5, what should happen? Well, you'll get okay. the shadow instead. That's you? because <laughs> there is an additional. <laughs> option Command 5 is the shadow. I made that earlier. Right. Okay. So it goes by numbers, and it can go up to zero, um, would be uh, channel 10, and it can go through these. Um, option Command 1 actually loads the red, Option Command 2 loads the green from an image, and Option Command 3 will load the blue. And these are based on masks? Uh, uh, these are masks, but based upon a grayscale image found in a channel. Whoa. So <laughs> we remember, we remember that, that a grayscale channel represents a mask. And so if I load number four, it's clear that number four, which is a mask, black and white, and when I load it on top of itself, we can see that it turns it, the mask into a selection. Okay, okay, and everything that was white and the mask becomes selected, everything that was black is not selected. Exactly. Okay, do we get that? We got that. And do we get the quick keys? Option Command 4 oh. brings up the text. Option Command 5 brings up the shadow and loads it in directly. Yes, you can do it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Select, load selection, too much trouble. Oh, yeah. The drag and, drag and drop or option command four. Or, or one other, right? Option click on the channel name. Exactly. Deke does know that. <laughs> option click on the channel name will, will load that channel. Right. Exactly. Deke, you're such a show off. <laughs> but, but I prefer sometimes Deke because stuff. that one isn't quite as effective as option command four or five because, because I'm on the in the layers right. dialog and I'm not in the channels dialog, right. but I want to access those. So here we have our shadow. Let's create a new layer. Again, I'm holding down the option key to create a new layer. Always create a new layer when I'm dealing with shadows because I may want to move them, change their opacity, all sorts of things. So we're going to get to the default colors of black and white by clicking here in the palette. What's a, is there a keyboard equivalent for getting to the default colors? <laughs> there is a keyboard shortcut. You know, and I bet Deke, I bet Deke, that's the one I don't know. It's D it's for D. default. Um, but I'll, just to prove that I do know something, <laughs> Deke all knows that the X will invert the foreground and background colors. Another we'll nice switch one. Em. Switch oh, okay. them. Switch them. X. Switch. And D does uh, <laughs> the default, default black, and white. black and white. Right. Um, so we have black and white. We're on a new layer, and we hit Option Delete to flood this section. Okay. So we have our shadow down here. Bingo. Well, let's go back to our text. No, wait, wait, that shadow, we might want to change its opacity a little bit. It was a little harsh. Let's go back to our text. That's Option Command 4, bring up our text. We could flood this with a color with text, like this. And we've started our project, but wait, there's more to come. More to come. Yes. More text effects, huh? Yep. OK. It's break time once again, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, we'll have more text effects in Photoshop 3.0 with Russell Brown. Welcome back to the show. We just saw a text effect. 
Russell showed us several different ways to turn channels into selections, and then he took some text and used the shadow effect on it. And here we are. Here we are with avocado wood. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite right. Pretty. Command Z. Yeah. Command Z on that. Command D to get rid of our selection. Um, I want to create some wood, but first I want to create the text the wood's going to go into. Let's create another layer. Remember that option click on the layer right. uh, icon. And option command four should bring us back up the text. In review, channel number four was our solid text that I had created earlier. And here it is. Let's put, let's create a color. Let's mix a color that sort of looks like wood, <laughs> sort of a brown tone like this. And let's fill that selection. Option delete will fill any current selection with the color. Okay. okay. Command D. Uh, that's not good enough. It's sort of boring looking wood. There's no green. Fiberboard. Fiberboard. Right. <laughs> Let's create yet another layer. All right. I'm going to create some synthetic wood. You don't have to go out and photograph the wood. This is cool. This is neat. This is synthetic wood. <laughs> Let's fill this layer, because there's nothing in it right now, with white. It just obscures everything. It's all with white. And let's go to one of my favorite filters, Add Noise. And we're going to run some noise on this, so that looks great. Around 500 is a nice number I use. Now, it's 500 at this particular resolution, and I'm using monochromatic um, setting on a uniform. Let's click OK. So that's an awful lot of noise. That's an awful lot of noise. <laughs> I wanted this noise will represent the grain in a okay. moment. Okay. So make sure there's a lot of noise. OK. Um, different types of wood, depending on how much noise you put in. And step number two, filter, blur, motion blur. Now, don't gasp. No, this is cool. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, you can take the filter and move the noise in the direction of the grain. So your grain could be moving diagonally across your wood, left to right, up or down. I'm going to set this to minus 90 so my grain of my wood goes from top to bottom. OK. Click OK. Now we've got the wood. Let's colorize that with Command U or Image Adjust Hue and Saturation. Colorize. Great technique. Saturation's a little bit too high. Color needs adjustment. Close enough. And there we got it. Now, it's obscuring everything, but we learned something in an earlier show. We learned about clipping groups, where we want to combine these two layers together, right. holding down the Option key and removing the dark line between the two, uh -huh. and then it can fuse in. And the final step would be to do an overlay so that the two layers combine together, and you get the grain and the wood texture. Let's drop the value. Let's select the Command U on the color of the background here and drop some of the saturation in our first color. So it's not quite so vibrant yeah, as it was there. Yeah, the vibrant, a little bit too vibrant. So now we have the wood grain going through. And uh, you know, for one last little trick. Now so for the 3D. 3D, if we've got <laughs> a little time here, let's go back to our channels. I created an emboss earlier. I took one of the blurred channels and ran the emboss filter on this channel. Okay. Okay. I'm now going to load channel 4 on top of this. Look how it outlines it. I'm going to copy the selection of only the area inside of the sharp letter forms. Okay. So it's going to do a copy. Now we're going to go back to our image and you'll see what's happened here. Let's target the layer that we want to work with, this layer, Command V, and should put it right into position and Command H. Wow! Whoa! So now we have the curvature of the emboss with the texture combining together to create wood. Right, right. That's really nice. Nice, nice. There nice. you go. Okay, let's let's summarize what we learned today. We started out with taking two-dimensional art and making it three-dimensional. Exactly. Okay, and we learned how to light that. Yep. Okay, and then we went to. We moved on into uh, working with layers and this text effect. Right, text um, effects. Um, we learned about shadows. There are a million ways to make a shadow. Okay. We showed you one of those million <laughs> ways. Okay. But what you did learn here today is how to create noise and create wood texture out of that noise, okay. and then going even farther, applying that noise using the clipping path. Okay. Well, the fifth time's a charm. You're going to be back, and what's up next? What's up next for Russ? Well, he's got some things in store for you related to 
let's say you're all done with all of this. Right. You've got this image all done, all the layers are come, are done, you're ready to take this out to a page maker or a Cork Express. What do you do? Who do you talk to? You talk to me in the next Russell show. Russell Brown. Yes. Okay, well, well, we'll see you next time. Tune in next time, Russell Brown will be back with more Photoshop 3.0. See you then.